Okay guys, we're right in the middle of a California wildfire up here in Vacaville and unfortunately <laughs> it's raining soot and you guys might see some of it, but we're okay. It's down the road a piece and hopefully we don't have to evacuate. We've already had to evacuate my dad, but everything's okay right now and I know that you guys never rest, so I'm gonna keep doing videos. Here's the question. You got a big block Chevy and you want a blown big block Chevy. Question now is, which blow? In this video, we're gonna take a look at two different forms of supercharging. First of all, we got the big bad boy, the 871 root supercharger with two carburetors on it, big presence, plenty of boost, plenty of power. On the other side, we're gonna look at a Vortec centrifugal supercharger, lots of efficiency, lots of power potential, and I'll tell you what, there's no winner and there's no loser. But you guys are gonna determine that because this is the internet. Now we did what we could to run them both around the same boost level, the, the same peak boost level, because let's face it, they don't provide the same average boost number, they don't provide the same boost curve, nor do they provide the same power curve, but really that's kind of the cool thing and that's the point of this test. I want to show you what the difference is. Like from the photos you can determine, hey, I like this one because it looks better, or I like this one because it looks better, but I'm going to show you the power, I'm going to show you the boost curves, you guys can decide which one's better. To illustrate the fundamental differences between the root supercharger and the centrifugal supercharger, we needed a test motor. And the test motor had to be stout enough because both of these superchargers were capable of supporting some fairly big power levels. So we needed a test motor that was also capable of withstanding that kind of power. So I put together a 496 stroker big block Chevy, and that's a 454 that's bored and stroked. We increased the bore by 60 thousandths board at 60 over basically and increase the stroke length from a four inch to a 4.25 inch you know by installing a stroker crank we also installed forged rods and forged pistons and on this combination the uh the combination of the piston design and the chamber volume produced a static compression of about eight and a half to one which is fairly low for most combinations but this motor was destined for a boat application where it would be run sustained for <laughs> at wide open throttle for long periods of time so we put in and it wasn't going to be non-intercooled so we put in low compression to you know make the thing safe to help it make power we put in a good camshaft but again since it was going to be driven around we couldn't go too crazy on the cam timing so we put a solid roller cam in, but a mild solid roller. It was the, you know, my go-to <laughs> big block Chevy cam for NA and boosted applications. It was a 300BR-14 from Comp Cams. And again, it's a solid roller, but a mild solid roller. 652 lift and a 255, 262 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. Obviously, we matched that with comp lifters and the push rods and that kind of stuff. We topped this thing off with a set of Airflow Research 335 heads, which in retrospect are <laughs> way more cylinder head than we needed for this combination. And how do we know that? Well, I also ran a back to back test between these 335 heads and the 315 heads. And the 315, 315 heads made identical power to the 335s, not because they're, <laughs> they can, but because they did on this combination. Basically, we didn't have enough motor to take advantage of what these 335s had to offer. So the 315s were basically already more than enough for the power level that we were at. And adding more cylinder head really doesn't do anything if you don't have enough motor to go with it. So we finished this, this thing off with an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake, basically a 454R for rec port application and a 950 you know, Ultra XP carburetor, an MSD distributor, and the long tube headers that we always run on a dyno, which are two and an eighth you know, long tube dyno headers. Run in this manner are 496 or eight and a half to one 496. Produce peak power of 650 horsepower and 577 foot-pounds of torque. And it's also interesting to note, I also ran this combination with a tunnel ram, and that video is up where I compared the single plane to the dual plane to the tunnel ram, so if you want to check that out, there's a video up on that. But with the tunnel ram, this thing made almost 690 horsepower, so the tunnel ram helped this thing out quite a bit. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we started adding boost. After breaking in our 496 blower motor, and tuning this thing, running it for peak power, it was time to actually add boost. So the first thing we did was add an 871 from Wyan. Obviously that required replacing the Victor Jr. intake manifold and then replacing the single carburetor with two 950 blower carburetors. We wanted to make sure that the 871 had plenty of airflow and fuel flow to make the power. So here's what happened when we added the 871 supercharger to our 496. 
run with the 871 supercharger at a peak boost of 7.7 .7 pounds our supercharged 496 made 910 horsepower and 779 foot pounds of torque so it did very well as you can see nice flat torque curve which is what we would kind of expect from a root supercharger it had a nice flat boost curve which i'll be showing you as well at the end here when we we're comparing it to the vortex supercharger basically started out at seven pounds and ended up at 7.7 .7. so it, it remained fairly flat for this combination which means that that 871 supercharger was a good match for our low compression <laughs> over cylinder headed 496. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the Vortec YSI supercharger. So here's what happened when we installed the Vortec. With, equipped with the Vortec at a peak boost of 7 pounds, 6.9 pounds. The combination produced 936 horsepower and 794 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see they both did very well, made quite a bit over 900 horsepower. The Vortec made a little bit more peak power compared to the 871 and started doing so from about 5,000 RPM between 5,000 and 5,100. So let's call it that 5,050 RPM. From there on out, the Vortec made a little bit more, but you can see below that, the root supercharger with its more immediate boost made more torque. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to show you this is starting at eight, at 4,000 RPM and running out to 6,500. I'll show you what happened um, at the lower RPM now so we can kind of compare the roots blower, which is it kind of in its element down low. So I want to show you what happened when we ran the two from, let's say, 3,000 RPM. You can compare the two blowers because, you know, that's important for a lot of guys. They want that instant boost response and instant low speed torque, which is what a roots blower is all about. So let's take a look. To get a better feel for how these blowers actually work, we obviously need to see how well they're working down at lower engine speed. So we ran that comparison as well, at least down to 3000 RPM. So this is our naturally aspirated 496. Now let's take a look and see what happened down low when we added the 871 supercharger to the mix. And as, as we would expect, it made a significant difference. It's, it's in the red here. It has lots and lots of power and lots of extra torque, even down here at 3000 RPM, or let's say 3100 RPM, 516 foot pounds versus 673 foot pounds. So you get some pretty big gains there because it, it already has about seven pounds of boost there. So it's doing very well. So as we would expect, it, it picked up a lot of peak power but it also picked up a lot of low speed torque and, and that that gain would have continued even down low if you hit it at 1000 RPM if you want to go to wide open throttle at 1000 RPM or 1500 or 2000 or whatever the number is. But in a boat application, obviously you're not going to be doing that, especially in the jet boat, which is what this thing was going in. So now let's take a look and we can compare this to what happened when we put the Vortex centrifugal supercharger on it. Now compared to a roots blower, a centrifugal supercharger has a rising boost curve, so it makes a lot less boost down low than it does at the top. In fact, it only makes the maximum boost at the peak RPM. So let's see what happened when we ran the Vortec on this thing down low. So that is in green, and it's kind of in between the NA combination and the roots blower, the instant boost of the roots blower combination, you can see it's starting to, even at 4,500, it's starting to take off and it will eventually just pass the power output of the roots blower and then continue to be better at the top end. But down low, take a look at this. This is a big difference. The difference between the roots blower and the centrifugal blower down here, let's, let's take our difference here at 3,100 again, 580 foot pounds versus 673 foot pounds. So you're talking about, you know, getting close to a hundred foot pound difference down there. And for a lot of guys, that makes all the difference in the world because it's better certainly from 3000 all the way to 4,500 and quite possibly farther than that, you know, out closer to 5,000 RPM. So where do you want your power? Do you want it at the beginning of the curve or the end of the curve? And really for a lot of guys, having the big 871 stick up, especially a polished one, <laughs> is reason enough to have that kind of blower, even if it doesn't make quite as much peak power. Now, if you're racing your jet boat or something and you need all of the power, then, hey, 
the extra power and the extra efficiency offered by a centrifugal blower works really well, especially on a jet boat, because when you go to wide open throttle, it's like putting it on a real high stall, stall speed torque converter. It's all the way up in the RPM range, and you're really using it where the centrifugal would be good. So again, up to you guys. <laughs> Let me know what you guys want. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Which one of these would you choose? Obviously, for a jet boat application, maybe the maybe the centrifugal is the way to go. But this combination would obviously work equally well in the Chevelle or a Camaro or a truck or anything else. So let me know what you guys would put it in and which one you would choose. Okay, for this graph, I've combined both the high and low versions for both superchargers so we can look at the boost curves of each one. And there's such a big difference between the two. It should be fairly obvious which one is which. But the higher boost curve that starts, starts out above 5 pounds is the root supercharger. And it starts out at about 5.5, 5.4 pounds and ends up at 7.7 .7 pounds. Now the centrifugal supercharger, if you take a look, it starts out much lower, which is why we saw the big difference in torque between the two. This starts out at 2.1 pounds at 3,000 RPM and ends up at 6.9 PSI out here at 6,500 RPM. So it has a rising curve. A couple of interesting things. First of all, obviously, big difference in the boost curve supplied by the supercharger, but also a big difference in the power curves. Now, with the roots blower, the immediate boost of the roots blower, we get a, we get really good torque production. But here's one thing I want you to remember: take a look at take a look back, <laughs> scroll back in the video, and see where the crossover point was between the power between the roots blower and the centrifugal blower. The interesting thing is, even though the centrifugal blower never made more boost than the roots blower did, it started making more power. So it became more efficient, even though it had a lower boost. So just the fact that one has more boost than the other doesn't always tell you which one is going to make more power. Because obviously, in this case, we had less boost from the centrifugal, but it ended up making more peak power and did so from, I think, around 5000 RPM or so. You guys can make comments and let me know when that was if you scroll back, because I have not scrolled back and looked at that. <laughs> but I wanted to provide you guys the boost curves to give you an idea of what's happening. Also, why the power curves are doing what they do on our 496. This motor will actually have the roots blower on it when it goes in the boat. It will not have the centrifugal supercharger on it because it is it is a uh, jet boat. And they wanted the look of the big root supercharger. <laughs> so this will be a good combination. It'll have plenty of power. I mean, this thing makes over 900 horsepower. So it'll be, you know, it'll be silly fast. And at eight and a half to one, they'll be able to run whatever kind of gas they wanted. I think that they could even run this thing at seven pounds on pump gas. The motor's going to be cold. They could turn the timing down a little bit and still have lots and lots of fun. So this is the difference between the two two forms of supercharging and I know again since I mentioned this in the in the intro that <laughs> it is the internet and everyone's going to bicker back and forth about which one is ultimately the best but the cool thing is because you guys have a supercharged big block you're going to have nothing but fun let's get to our conclusion okay guys what did you think about our comparison on our 496 big block Chevy first of all it was kind of a cool build I like building those strokers we had more than enough cylinder head on it we had my go-to big block Chevy camshaft it had low compression because it was going in a boat and that's the point of all this. I mean, if you're going to pick a supercharger, you're not going to pick the most efficient one. You're going to pick something for some other reason. Like if you're going to pick a big 871 with dual quads on it, you're going to pick it because it looks awesome. It provides plenty of power and actually it might be best for your application. On a specific buildup like for a jet boat, the centrifugal blower actually might be better if what you're looking at is maximum power and maximum acceleration. Because on a jet boat, you hit the thing, you're at RPM. The, the centrifugal blower is already up where it's making lots of boost and lots of power. So really, for a centrifugal blower application, jet boat, that's a good combination. But what about for a truck or a car or some sort of street machine? What about if you're not even looking for making lots and lots of power? What if you just want lots and lots of really cool looks? Maybe the 871? You guys decide. Come on, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. You know the drill, and I will keep on testing, even with these wildfires.